everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we're back again and here now we have another video for you and we're going to talk once more about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 and do some box office reporting for its first weekend of release covering Friday the 14th to Sunday the 16th of July 2023. Now there could be spoilers for the movie within this video so just beware and you can check out both my non-spoiler and spoiler reviews of the film and also reviews of previous Mission Impossible films within the channel and I'll leave some links within the description. So then we go on to the opening figures of this weekend for the movie and in US cinemas it opened to a somewhat decent if not below expectations amount of 56 million to take the number one spot from the previous holder Insidious the Red Door. Now what's key to remember here is that the movie actually opened in cinemas on July the 10th and this was to try and maximise the screen sharings due to both Barbie and Oppenheimer opening the following week. So in terms of the overall gross, the movie has made around $80 million within US cinemas. And when we look at the international numbers, they're far more impressive with the movie taking in around $155 million overseas. Globally, the film has now grossed over $235 million worldwide. Now there's been a lot of narratives and headlines surrounding these numbers. One of the big ones being that the movie itself has somewhat underperformed, especially in the US. But when we look at the Mission Impossible franchise overall, it's never opened big to anything over 100 million. The previous franchise entry, Mission Impossible Fallout, opened to around 61 million in 2018. So Dead Reckoning's 56 million is probably right in the ballpark for a Mission Impossible movie. And there's no doubt that if the movie had fully opened on a weekend instead of midweek, it likely would have hit around 80 to 90 million, which would have generated for much more hyped and positive headlines. And when you look back at all of the Mission Impossible movies, they haven't opened huge, but they've shown strong legs amongst the following weekends. Fallout, for example, went on to gross over 200 million within the US and overall grossed over 791 million worldwide. Now, after a lackluster summer blockbuster for 2023, many were looking for Dead Reckoning to be a massive success that Tom Cruise would once again save the box office as what he did last year, supposedly with Top Gun Maverick, that of course went on to gross 1.4 billion. And the movie itself would show the likes of Disney and Warner Brothers how to make populist entertainment for the masses, entertainment that was mostly free of CGI, wokeness or agenda. But as with Top Gun Maverick, I once again push back on that narrative in terms of saving the box office. First of all, not just one movie can do that. Now, a movie can show the standard in terms of providing entertainment for the mainstream, but it can't erase any previous failures that have come before it. So if Dead Reckoning had managed to generate higher numbers, it wouldn't take away any of the disappointments that we saw from the likes of The Flash, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Little Mermaid or Fast X. Now if Dead Reckoning doesn't meet the expected numbers, it also debunks the narrative that the summer movies of 2023 all failed because of superhero fatigue, agenda or identity politics or virtual signaling, because Dead Reckoning have none of these throughout the movie. If it indeed went on to be a disappointment, then we'd have to look at a larger picture in terms of people maybe not prepared to go to cinema as often, probably preferring to stay at home and watch these movies on streaming. Of course, they're going to the streaming platforms a lot more quickly now. We've seen with many films, for example, Fast X, which went straight to the digital platform only after three weeks of release. So if that's the normal window now, then you can't really blame a lot of audiences for choosing to stay at home and waiting for these films to come out on streaming rather than going out to the theatres to watch them. And again, I asked the question, why would these numbers have been disappointing? Why were you expecting 100 million plus opening when the previous instalments haven't made that amount? So after all of that, I'm still very hopeful for Dead Reckoning Part 1, given the largely positive reception from both audiences and critics, which also helps. And the Mission movies have performed mostly just as well or even better than the previous instalment. And the film will also have to rely, as with all of these movies, on the overseas numbers to carry it through. I also debunked the theory that Dead Reckoning should ultimately make a billion because Top Gun Maverick did so last year. People ask the question, why hasn't the audience for Maverick so far transferred over to Mission Impossible? Well, I asked the question, why should they? Top Gun Maverick and Mission Impossible are two completely different genres and Maverick's success was really built on the nostalgia from the original from 1986 and also a severe lack of competition in that particular year. But despite all of this, I'm still optimistic for Dead Reckoning. I've always said that it will fall probably just short of $1 billion, and I still stand by that. I feel it will probably end up at around anything from $600 to $800 million, which would still be a good result, although we do have to be consistent and say that if we're very harsh in criticising 
Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny and deeming it a flop because of its 300 plus million dollar budget, then we also have to put the same criticism towards Dead Reckoning, which also has a huge budget of 290 million, a lot of that which is down to COVID costs. But we will wait and see overall what happens in the next upcoming weeks before we can get a better picture as to whether Dead Reckoning Part 1 will be an overall success. I'm going to stand by and say that I overall will think it would indeed be a success, though it will indeed have to rely on the overseas numbers. Now the only other big news this weekend was the sound of freedom very much breaking the conventional process within box office by actually having an increase in gross in its following weekend. In its second weekend of release, it had a considerable 37% to gross 27 million. So the movie has now made 85 million within the US and it's well on its way to making over $100 million in that territory, which is always very good to see a lower budget film perform as well, especially when you consider the serious subject matter. Now at the same time, I would say that the movie's success is largely down to a lot of the controversy that surrounded it in terms of its both subject matter and perception. Many people went to watch the movie more out of curiosity to see what the drama and fuss is all about. But once more, I think the film in terms of its overall release has already done its job and I think it's still a major win for Angel Studios overall. So there's my overall thoughts and feelings on the first Proper opening weekend for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you think it will fare in its next upcoming weekend? We do of course have the double whammy in terms of a release in both Barbie and Oppenheimer. For which a lot of promotion has been done particularly on social media about the dual release. Which I think personally is a mistake. So we will see how far that performs as well as whether Mission Impossible can indeed show signs that would indeed go on to make a billion dollars worldwide. So look out for all of that in the future. And as always, if you have any particular movies or television series or any other topics within the entertainment genre that you'd like to see me cover, then also let me know within the comments and I will see if I can provide further commentary for you on that subject matter within the future. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves and I will see you very, very soon. <laughs>